today we're in front of a Heller 1707 Mark III lead-free convection reflow oven. Now the 1707 signifies in Heller's terminology it has seven zones on the top, seven zones on the bottom. It also has cooling zone at the end. Now for most electronic manufacturers seven zones may well be enough. For others who run higher volume they might require a bigger longer oven and, and we can also go to a dual lane type oven as well if, if volume is such that it demands it. Now main reason for going longer zones is purely cycle time. For example, you might have three pick and place machines standing in front of the reflow oven that might have a line cycle beat time of around 30 seconds. I, every 30 seconds, we're getting a board coming into the oven. Now these boards could be small, they could be large. So it, it and, and they could be, you know, a lot of components, lead free. So the oven, needs the the ability to be able to profile correctly all of those PCBs. So the longer the oven in a higher throughput factory, the better. So we can see here on the software, we can see how easy it is to set up. We have the zones all numbered. In this case, one to seven top one to seven bottom and it's just simply a case of trying to mimic the supplier's solder paste profile or glue profile you can run a glue curing profile through these ovens as well you can run leaded you can run lead free all on the same oven we just the important part of it is profiling the oven and getting the correct profile based on the settings we put in these zones and the belt speed. There, that is your important criteria when, when setting up a reflow oven. Now the oven requires some exhaust. So as you can see here, we have ducting, taking the fumes from the flux, when the flux melts, out of the factory. So typically we have a blower in the roof which is pulling pulling the fumes out of the out of the zone in the oven now of course being a reflow oven you do have options if you need greater process control you can run nitrogen on your lead free reflow oven basically nitrogen is flooded into the chamber around the around the PCB the, the gas is circulating the PCB and tr trying to minimize the, the oxygen content in the oven which will allow for better solderability of the PCBs and your components and also help in minimizing voiding in your small BGA CSP type devices. So nitrogen on these ovens or on any reflow oven is generally an additional option. Now, in some reflow ovens, you may be running a wide PCB. That might necessitate using what we call center board support, CBS. In between the conveyor rail and runs the length of the oven and it gives support to the center of the PCB. Now, in a lot of cases, if you're going to run a center board support CBS system, you need to allow for that in your PCB design in that you have a clear run down the middle of the PCB to allow for the center board support to come up on the underside of the PCB and give you that support that's required. Now, you can also run what we would call a curing or glue profile in the oven. And 
basically just that necessitates lower temperatures. So again, what we're trying to do, whether we use glue, whether we use solder, we're just trying to match the supplier's recommended profile to the oven. So each of the zones, we have zone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a cooling zone. They can all be set in the software at different temperatures to mimic and copy the profile that we're looking for. So glue, leaded solder, lead-free solder, not a problem on this reflow oven.